Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We're starting Surah At-Tur. And Surah At-Tur, the beginning of Surah At-Tur is one of the more difficult passages in the Quran because there are tons and tons and tons of opinions about what each of the oaths mean. And it's probably not suitable for this kind of setting to go through all of those opinions. Uh, and res- being respectful, while being respectful of the fact that there are multiple opinions uh, out there, I'm going to share with you just some of the ones, or at least one, one sequence of opinions that will help us understand the surah, inshallah ta'ala. But you should be mindful also that there are other ways of looking at these oaths. What tur Allah Azza wa Jalla begins by saying, I swear by at tur at tur when we read in Surah Al-Qasas and other places, is the mountain on which Allah spoke with Musa alayhi salam. But also in Arabic, any big mountain, Al-Jabal Al-Kabir, Al-Jabal Al-Ali, Yusamma Aydan, Tur. The, a tall mountain is also called Tur. So it could be any mountain, but because there's an Alif Lam, uh, many hold that this is referring to the mount, meaning Musa alayhi salam, the mountain where revelation took place. Wa kitabim mastur. And a book that has been written out, that's been laid out in, well, well documented. Now the Qur'an, when it was revealed, it was revealed in the form of words on the heart of the Prophet ﷺ. Of course, in its original, it's written out mastur. So it could refer to the Qur'an. But if you keep it in sequence with the previous oath, then the tablet that was given to Musa salam, and also immediately after, because they were a people of reading and writing, how did they document the Torah? They used to write it out. And they had scrolls upon scrolls upon scrolls. So a book that had been written down, that, it, that was line by line by line. وَكِتَابٍ مَسْتُورٍ Put in lines. فِي رِقْتٍ مَنْشُورٍ In thin and soft paper. Parchment. رِق رِق is anything ما يُكْتَبُ فِيهِ Whatever is written in. So a paper can be called رِق also. But رِق comes from رَقِيق. رَقِيق literally means soft and fine. And that's why even in modern Arabic when you talk to somebody, hey, tell him something like, go easy on him. Or give him something that will soften his heart. It's called رَقَائِقُ الْقُلُوبِ It will soften the hearts. So, fi riqim manshur implies that is written in very fine, fragile paper that's spread out. So you can imagine, again, if we keep in line with the, the, the sequence of thought, it, you can imagine the, um, the scrolls of the scholars of Bani Israel just laid out one after the other that they've written their, their, their works in. Fi riqim manshur. Wal bayt al ma'mur. Then the other side. And the house that is well populated. Yani al ma'mur. There's a lot of people in a city, so they say Baladun Ma'murun. Baladun Ma'murun, Ahilun Sukanuhu, there's a lot of people that live in there. Well Bayt al Ma'mur, and I swear by the house that is well populated. Well visited, a lot of people are there. Now, what does that house refer to? A lot of uh, people hold the opinion this is referring to the Kaaba. In a hadith of the Prophet, وسلم, he called Al Bayt al Ma'mur the Kaaba that's on the seventh heaven. We learned that every sky has its own Kaaba, has its own Kaaba, and it's above the Kaaba that we have. And this again, and then some people say, well, the earth is rotating, so are all the Kaabas rotating? Are all of them moving? Well, actually, you're talking about the seen, and Allah is talking about the unseen. So you can't, you can't put physical laws and physical arguments on the unseen world. It doesn't work that way. So, well, Bayt al Ma'mur. Others hold the opinion that this is referring to, if it's referring to the Kaaba, it can also by extension be referring to the entire world, the house that is populated. This, is, this entire world is like a house that's fully populated. And that opinion is then further fortified that this entire planet is Al Bayt al Ma'mur by the, the roof that is elevated high above it. Meaning the high elevated roof ceiling, the sky itself. وَالْبَحْرِ الْمَشْجُورِ And then, so, so there were two re- great revelations that were kind of alluded to. On the one hand, there is Musa salam's revelation. And then on the other hand is Makkah and by extension the world. And then the, uh, the, third, revel- the third oath here is وَالْبَحْرِ الْمَشْجُورِ The ocean that boils over. Sajjar actually is intense boiling where the water rises because of the boil. Like something from underneath pushed it up. And it popped out. This is like we say at the end of Quran we read, Wa idal biharu sujirat. Sujirat. This is masjur. Same same word is ism of rule form. That the the ocean that has been made that way, it's meant to be raised like that. It's meant to boil over. Inna adaba rabbi kalawaqya. No doubt about it. This is the the jawab al qasam. No doubt about it. The punishment of your master is bound to happen. You notice at the beginning of Dariyat it was similar. Ma lahu min dafir. 
there's not going to be anyone that's going to be able to push it away, defend against it, cancel it, nullify that punishment that's coming. يَوْمَ تَمُورُ السَّمَاءُ مَوْرَى The day on which the sky starts rattling, relentlessly starts shaking and rattling. النَّاقَدُ تَمُورُ فِي سَيْرِهَا يَقُولُونَ العرب يقول العرب the, the she-camel is going side by side, side to side in her walk. She's running, the she-camel is running, and she's kind of wavering, shaking. When you raise, when you move in a way that raises a lot of dust, you drag your feet or your vi something's vibrating or moving quickly and it's raising dust, then they say mawr for that. Dust rising because of quick motion. So Allah is literally saying this, the sky is going to start vibrating like this. You know, وَتَسِيرُ الْجِبَالُ سَيْرًا And then mountains are going to start sailing away. They're going to start taking a stroll. Sayr in Arabic is easy motion. Easy motion. Like effortless, smooth movement. And the mountains are just going to be sailing. And in later on in Quran, we're going to find كَلْعِحْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ وَتَكُولُ الْجِبَالُ كَلْعِحْنِ الْمَنْفُوشِ Like, um, you ever have cotton candy? Cotton candy flowing in the air. And that's what mountains are going to look like. فَوَيْلٌ يَوْمَئِذٍ لِلْمُكَذِّبِينَ then the ten terrible destruction on that day will be for those who called the message, called the Prophet, called Allah, called Revelation, called the Akhirah a lie. الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي خَوْضٍ يَلْعَبُونَ Those who in their khawd, khawd is, you know, pointless uh, activities, hanging out, just shooting the breeze. But khawd also literally refers to treading water. So if you're walking on earth, you know where your feet are planted and your feet are stable. So you're safe. But if you're like, for example, taking a walk, you take your shoes off and you're going into a lake. And the beginning of the part is shallow. But you can't really see all the way at the bottom. So you don't know what you're going to step on. And what you step on can, might even kill you. It could be a predator, it could be a rock, it could be just a deep shallow and you just step and you just go down all the way. So when people are treading with dangerous waters, and that expression in English, to tread dangerous waters, that's khawd in Arabic. So they're, 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 they're playing with fire. They're engaged in some risky business playing around. يَلْعَبُونَ فَهُمْ الَّذِينَ هُمْ فِي خَوْضٍ يَلْعَبُونَ يَوْمَ يُدَعُونَ إِلَى نَارِ جَهَنَّمَ دَعَا The day on which they're going to be pushed into the fire of, towards the fire of hell, pushed over and over again. هَذِهِ النَّارَ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ بِهَا تُكَذِّبُونَ this, this fire is the one that you used to be lying against all the time, that you used to say it doesn't exist. أَفَسِحْرٌ هَذَا Is it magic today? What was the previous surah saying? سَاحِرٌ أَوْ مَجْنُونَ So is this magic? What do you think? أَمَنْتُمْ لَا تُبْصِرُونَ Or you still can't see. You're still not able to see. إِسْلَوْهَا Enter it. فَاصْبِرُوا And be patient when you go. أَوْ لَا تَصْبِرُوا Or if you want, don't be patient. سَوَاءٌ alaykum. It's the same for you. You cry or not, scream or not, it won't make a difference. إِنَّمَا تُجْزَوْنَ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ You are only being compensated with all the things that you did on your own. You did yourselves. Or you continually did. إِنَّ الْمُتَّقِينَ فِي جَنَّاتٍ وَنَعِيمٍ No doubt about it. People that tried to protect themselves, people of taqwa, people that were cautious of Allah, are going to be in multitudes of gardens. And they're going to be in constant blessings. فَاكِهِينَ بِمَا أَتَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ They're going to be enjoying themselves. فَاكِهِينَ They're going to be joyous. They're going to be super happy because of what Allah had granted them. وَوَقَاهُمْ رَبُّهُمْ عَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And Allah would have protected them from the punishment of the blazing flame. Now this is thirty uh, third person. فَاكِهِينَ they are going to be this way. Allah will have given them the punishment, or will, will have protected them from the punishment of the roaring flame. But notice the next ayah. Kulu washrabu hani'an. Eat and drink. Carefree. Hani'an? Don't worry about it. Care, well, anything you want, you don't have to check the label if it's halal or not. It's all halal there. But notice, we went from third person to second person. This is called iltifat. It happens a lot in the Quran, but a few times I'd like to highlight it for you. So third person means Allah is talking about those people are going to be in paradise. They're going to be enjoying themselves. They will be protected from the punishment of the flame. But then all of a sudden Allah says, He doesn't say they will be eating and they will be drinking. He says eat and drink. Now eat and drink is what person? Second person. You know what that suggests? A moment ago the listener was thinking, Oh, yeah, they, 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 not me, they. There are some people that are going to be in Jannah. 
But Allah forces you and me to imagine ourselves there. Because the second person is not talking about someone else, it's talking about you. You eat and drink. He doesn't, he doesn't even have فَيَقُولُ لَهُمْ Then he will say to them. No, it doesn't even say that. It says, no, 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 I want you to visualize yourselves being told, eat and drink, carefree, because of what you used to do. I told you yesterday, Allah says this is because of what you did. And we say, no, this is because of your mercy. We, don't, we never say this is because of what we did. We don't say that. Allah says that. Allah appreciates us and we appreciate Allah. That's how it works. Allah appreciates us and says, this is, you did well. And we say, no, Ya Allah, we know. Ya Allah, you, you provided this from your mercy. But the, the gift here, I want you to not overlook the gift here. The first gifts Allah mentioned, they're going to be in gardens. They're going to be in constant blessings. Then Allah says they're going to be overjoyed because of what other, other mysteries Allah will give them. That we don't even know about. Then Allah will have protected them from hellfire. All these gifts are there. Then Allah adds eat and drink. But even that's not the real gift. You know what the real gift is? Allah is talking to us. The fact that Allah is talking to us is the gift here. Kulu ashrabu. Hani and bima kuntum ta'abalun. And not just that he's talking to us, he added, if Allah just said, Kulu wa shrabu hani, and it was enough. Eat and drink carefree. Enjoy yourselves. Party away. But Allah added, bima kuntum ta'abalun. How motivated do you get when your dad comes over to you and says, You know, son, I just saw your report card. You did really well this year. I'm really proud of you. How much does it mean to you? Even if you don't like your boss, your boss comes over to you and says, last week, you know, when you finished the project, that was incredible. I really appreciated that. Even if you hate your boss, you'll be like, wow, that felt, that felt really good. A teacher acknowledging your work. You being acknowledged by somebody important. You know? I, you know, I used to work at a company where there were like 500 employees. How's the CEO going to know everybody? He's not. But he walks over to some mid-level clerk's cubicle, the CEO that has like 80 offices, walks over to that one office, into that one cubicle, and tells the guy by name, hey, by the way, really good job the other day. That guy's day is made. He's like, wow, I just got, I just got acknowledged by the boss. Allah is acknowledging what we did. Kulu washrabu hani and bima kuntum ta'amalun. It's incredible. Now, then after that, you know, once the, once the graduation ceremony, in the graduation ceremony, you get recognized. After the ceremony, what happens? The graduation party. مُتَّكِئِنَ ala سُرُرِ masufa. Then they're going to be chilling, le leaning back on these beds and couches that are laid out in rows. Because they're so, مُصْفُوفَ يَعْنِي هُنَاكَ الْكَثِيرِ مِنَ الضُّيُوبِ There are a lot of guests. <laughs> That's why you have to have a lot of couches. You know, when you have a big party at your house, you have to move all the furniture. You have to move the couches and all the chairs in one place and turn the house upside down because a lot of guests are coming. This is already laid out. The party's already been set up. You don't have to rent from like party city or anything. Or rent tables and chairs from the masjid that you do. And we've married them off to Hur. Beautiful spouse, a beautiful spouse, Eeen, whose eyes are mesmerizing. So there's a marriage ceremony. There's actually a nikah. Zawajnahum. Like zawajna, we used, we saw... For, for example, in the case of Zainab radiallahu anha, Zawajna, Allah, Allah made the marriage happen between her and Zainab, between her and the Prophet So here, the marriage ceremony will happen. وَالَّذِينَ amanu, You know, <laughs> it reminds me, you can't marry until you graduate. <laughs> so you graduated, and there's a party, oh, okay, now I can get married. <laughs> وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ And those who believed. And their future generations followed them with faith. Now usually, it's like for example recently, the memory of Surah Al-Hujurat is fresh in our minds. It was constantly Al-Iman, 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 Al-Iman. And now we're seeing Bi-Imanin, not Bil-Iman. Bil, not Bil-Iman, Bi-Imanin. And this could be actually a form of Taqseer, some Iman. Their next generations, maybe they weren't as good as them, but they still had Iman. Which means that the people who came before, maybe they were in some really high level Jannah. And then their like, great, great, great grandkids aren't, they're good, but they're not like super Jannah level. So they're down there in like level 1, you know, level 2 Jannah, and these are like level 7 Jannah, they're way up there. Then what's going to happen? Al-Haqna bihim, we will join them together. Now, you're up there, and this has come up before, but now it's coming in more explicit detail. 
you're up there in the seventh heaven, or your ancestors are in the seventh heaven, and you are down here in the first heaven, but you want to be together. And the distance between one heaven to the other is like us looking at the stars. So we're not exactly, you know, in communication. There are different worlds. Every Jannah is a different world. So what do we do? Should we go down to them or they come up to us? Allah says, no, you, the people on the first Jannah, they get, actually, we, we heard that you have connections up there. You know, they, they, you have an elite pass. You can all come. Let's go, seventh heaven. So they got moved up because of their families. Now people have, this is the beauty of Jannah. Jannah is levels, and the people in the highest levels get to promote their younger, their lower level family members up to their level. So they can all be together, because that's one of the joys they want. But, people shouldn't think, look at this and think that you're going to be able to pull people out of where? Out of hellfire. That's not, that's not how it works. That's not the case. The cases of the, the, the righteous in your families, though who had some iman at least, be iman in, alhaqna bihim, we will cause union between them, we'll join them together. وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلٍ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And we won't take, we won't take down, you know, alata, uh, alata yalitu, it's an interesting word, verb, it's, it also came up in Surah Al-Hujurat. Okay? لَا يَلِتْكُمْ مِنْ عَمَالِكُمْ شَيْءًا Alata yalitu. I think the mustard is alatan, alatan. But what it means is uh, to give somebody less than what they deserve in a paycheck. Like you're deserve, you expect a paycheck is supposed to be $500, and you see your check is like $400. So this is, this is a form of alat. You've been given less than what you deserve. So Allah says, we're not going to give them less than what they deserve in any of their deeds at all. كُلُّ مْرِئِمْ بِمَا كَسَبَ رَهِينَ Every single individual, every single person, in regards, only in regards to whatever he or she earned, is being held in collateral. Raheen. Raheen is, I'm holding something from you. Like, you know, you borrowed money from me, and I say, okay, I'll hold the title of your car as collateral. And then when you pay me back, you can have your title back. Allah says, you yourself, your deeds are being held. Your deeds are the collateral that will free you. You will go before Allah, yeah, Allah want to go to Jannah. Okay, well, here's your deeds. And there's an exchange happening. Your deeds become the collateral, subhanAllah. And we're going to extend them further with fruits and, and meat from all kinds of things that they really want to crave. So you want a chicken shawarma, it's available. You want a dana kebab, it's available. You're like, do you have lamb here? Do you have goat? Oh, goat is good. Do you have duck? Do you have duck too? Cool. So you get to pick which kind of meats you want. Notice fruits were mentioned first. So some of Asirun said perhaps there are, like in Jannah, the fruit is offered first and the meat is offered second. And so there may be some benefit in earth also for us to eat fruits before we eat our meals. And then some Muslim physicians started doing research into this stuff and they've written pretty interesting articles about this stuff. Inspired by Jannah. Inspired by the meal presentation in Jannah. Subhanallah. يَتَنَازَعُونَ فِيهَا كَأْسًا They'll be pull, yanking at each in Jannah the cups from each other. What? I thought Jannah is peace and calm and everybody's happy. Why are they snatching each other's cups? You know, when I go home, I mess with my kids a lot. And they get bothered if I don't mess with them. So, I'm fasting, but there's a, you know, my four-year-old is sitting there drinking chocolate milk. I say, hey, what you got there? Chocolate milk. Ah, I love chocolate milk. I'm going to get your chocolate milk. And he's running around the house. And I'm running around the house with him. And if I stop, he comes back to me and goes, I still got the chocolate milk. <laughs> the point is, they're playing around. We're playing around. And this is part of the joy of being in a family. You get to mess around. The guys, guys are hanging out. We're not just going to be wearing suits and ties and silver and bracelets and sitting formally like, you know... So, this is Jannah, it's very nice, very nice. It's not going to be one of those boring, like, lame parties you go to, where you have to be civil. You can let loose, man. You knock somebody's cup over, you knock your cup over, you're wrestling each other. It's all good. This is Jannah. Even though they're going to have good old fun, there's not going to be any nonsense. There's not going to be bakwas. And there's not going to be any sin. There's not going to be anything that causes sin either. You know how you do something innocent and it leads to sin? That's that theme. Something that leads to sin. 
creating sin. It's a sin. Ta'theem creating sin. To cause sin to happen. So Allah says, even though they're going to be having some great fun, none of it will lead to evil. When we're having fun, does somebody end up getting hurt? The fun stops when somebody's put down or somebody's feelings are hurt or, you know, kids are playing and the fun stops when a vase breaks or whatever. None of that stuff's going to happen in, in, in Jannah. Then an ayah that's sometimes hard to understand. And these young boys are going to be running around, these teenagers with those freckles, they're going to be running around serving food. Here, here, sir, here's more water. It's like, one of their voices kind of ripping because they're Hilman. You see those boys when they're like 13, 14 and their voice goes through a calamity? Right? So they're serving the food. But then Allah adds something. They look really nice. As though they are, they have been hidden pearls. Hidden pearls, shiny, clean. Now, why would Allah mention these boys looking good serving food? Why? You ever go to an elite restaurant? A catering place? All those servants, are they supposed to be prim, proper, cleaned up, nice. Any one of them shows up with a shirt untucked or a, you know, pants unironed or unclean, they're sent back home. We're not serving guests looking like that. You have to look your top. You have to look your level best. So this is very understandable. Even the servants are going to look like sharp because this adds to the aura of the whole thing. You know, you go to a restaurant and the guy serving you has got a smelly t-shirt on with like stains from slaughtering the animal and he serves you. You're like, I don't know if I want to be at this restaurant. You know, I don't think I want to eat here. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else, guys. And you go to a restaurant and people are dressed nicely. The guy's wearing a suit. He says, Sir, can I get you something else? And you're like, you know what that tells you? Oh, the service in the back end is really clean too. Because our impression of it goes based on, you know, the, these, the appearance of the servants. So Allah says, even the servants are so formally dressed, you know. And they're going around serving us. وَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ يَتَسَاءَلُونَ and next time you, by the way, next time you stop at a valet parking and look at those guys, then you remember this. <laughs> There's going to be just this service being provided everywhere. وَأَقْبَلَ بَعْضُهُمْ عَلَى بَعْضٍ يَتَسَأَلُونَ Then they're going to meet one another. And they're going to be asking each other all, all kinds of questions. Hey, I remember you. How you been? How was the life in the grave for you? It was long, wasn't it? No, it felt kind of short. Judgment day was, judgment day was crazy, right? Yeah, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Oh man, when we passed over the Sirat, whew, they're asking each other questions, they're reminiscing. Remember this? Remember that? Or remember how we used to go hang out at the masjid? Remember how we used to play basketball afterwards? Yeah, let's play ball now. Okay. Just casual conversations happening between people. They said, we, way before this, back in the day, we used to be in our family, and we used to be so afraid, what's going to happen to our family? Well, how are we going to be? Now, this Allah is mentioning after He mentions that the families are together. We've already talked about the families being together. And then you're like, you made it in general, you're like, oh my God, I used to be so worried about my kids. What Islamic school I'm going to put them in? Where they're going to be raised? Which city should we go to? Oh, when I'm going to send them to college, are they going to get influenced or not? You know, I used to be so stressed out about them. Who are they going to get married to? Are they going to find a righteous spouse? I used to think about all these things about their deen. Alhamdulillah, all of that was worked out. And my kids, they had some iman. And they were, you know, they were on the first level, but Allah brought them up so we can hang out together. We used to be so worried about our families. فَمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا Then Allah did a huge favor on us. وَوَقَانَ عَذَابَ samum, And He protected us from the punishment of the hot breeze. Samum. Samum is a burning hot wind. You guys may have experienced that once in a while in Texas. Once in a while. But in a desert climate, like in, a, in an Arizona or somewhere, or especially in like the Khalij, when the wind blows, the hot wind blows, forget if it's burning you with the sand or not, the wind itself will feel like burning. So you might think, you know, these people are traveling in the desert, why are they so wrapped up? You look at classical Arabic clothing, there's a big turban, there's wraps and wraps of clothes, aren't these guys dying of sweat? Why are they dressed like that? Because the wind burns even more. The wind and the sun burn even more, they're actually protecting themselves. So, عذاب samum. Inna kunna min qablu nad'uhu. إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْبَرُّ الرَّحِيمُ No doubt, we were the ones that used to, way back in the day, we used to make dua to Allah, نَدْعُوهُ We used to call on Him. 
إنه هو البر الرحيم. No doubt Allah Himself is the ultimate, the al uh, the source of all goodness. Bar also means land. And from that, why does bar mean land and bar also mean goodness? And bir, we, we read before the word bir, right? The land is stable. And we saw already the word hawd. Hawd is you're walking on unstable water and you don't know what lies next. Allah's, so we're saying Allah is the only source of stable goodness and the source of our stability. The one who showed us constant love and mercy. Fadakir. Then remind. فَمَا أَنْتَ بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ بِكَاهِنْ وَلَا مَجْنُونَ And you, by the special favor of your master, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are not a mind reader, and nor are you insane. Just keep reminding people, some people will hear all of this, and they're going to be taken in by it, they're going to be thinking about it, they're going to want that house in Jannah, other people will think this is a joke, and that's fine, let them ignore it. أَمْ يَقُولُونَ شَاعِرْ Is it the case that they're saying he's a poet? نَتَرَبَّصُوا بِهِ رَيْبَ الْمَنُونَ We'll just wait around and see what happens. The turn of events. رَيْبَ الْمَنُونَ يعني مرور الدهر That's رَيْبَ الْمَنُونَ The doubt of time. Meaning we don't know the, uh, the tomorrow's uncertain. Maybe his, his poetry fever will wear off. And he'll, it's a phase he's going through. So maybe he'll just get, snap out of it. And you don't have to deal with it. Let's just, maybe he's a poet. Let's just wait and see what happens. Let's not take any action yet. And this seems to suggest... You know, manun means time. Manun means time. Dahar. That's one of the words for time. And manun actually from man means favor, meaning sometimes time is favorable. So hopefully the situation will become more favorable for us. Time will bring about a favorable situation for us and he will stop calling on the message that he's calling on. So this seems to suggest that this is an earlier Makki Surah. They still, they're not sure what to do with him yet. They're not even sure if this is going to last. They think it's just, you know, people go through phases, he's going through a phase. So, نَتَرَبَّصُ بِهِ رَيْبَ الْمَنُونَ قُلْ تَرَبَّصُوا Tell them, you keep on waiting and procrastinating. فَإِنِّي مَعَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُتَرَبِّسِينَ And I'm also waiting and procrastinating along with you. And by the way, people of deen, uh, often when people, you know, sh exhibit a transformation in themselves, and it's kind of quick, then the loved ones and the people around them, they tend to think it's a phase. They'll snap out of it eventually, you know. And but he shows his commitment and says, "No, no, no! You just wait and see. You just wait and see. I'm, I'll, I'm waiting along to see also who's going through a phase." Oh, is it that their intellects? One of the words for intellect, aql in Arabic, is hulm and hilm. Hilm is the more popular pronunciation, and the plural of it is ahlam. Hilm also means forbearance, courtesy. You know, consideration for somebody else. But then what is, what is the specific meaning of ahlam? What kind of intellect? The intellect, the mind that seeks to find some mercy for somebody else. Ahlamuhum, meaning they're, they're, they're courteous intellects, they're considerate thoughts, because they're the leaders of Quraysh, they're being so considerate to the Prophet ﷺ and saying, oh, he's just a poet. And we're being nice to him right now. We don't need to punish him right now. And this is the decision we've made out of our mercy, out of our hilm. So, am ta'muruhum ahlamuhum bihada, am hum qawmun ta'hun. Or is it that they're a nation that has that is refused, that is rebellious, ta'hun? They're violators. So they're being nice to the Prophet ﷺ and saying, let's deal with him a little later. Let's see what happens. But you're not listening to what he's saying. You are in disobedience to Allah. You people are the criminals. You're the ones that need to be shown courtesy, not him. And is it the case that there's, or is it the case that they're saying that he's made this up? He's forced himself to say this. Qala, he said. Taqawwala, he forced himself to say. He made stuff up that's not even natural to him. You know, when you speak in a way that's not natural to you, people can tell. That's called taqawwul. So if you go home today and you say, Father, hast thou not seen it that I have been struggling through? The entire month of Ramadan thus, that's the qawwul. You know, that's not how you normally talk. What happened to you? You know, maybe the fast is getting to you finally. This, so they say, this doesn't sound like the Prophet. He's making this up. This is not his speech. This is not his qawwul. This has to be the qawwul. Bal la yu'minun. Rather, the case is that they don't believe at all. فَلْيَأْتُ بِحَدِيثِ مِثْلِهِ So if he's made it up, then they can make it up too. Then they should bring forward any new speech like that one. إِنْ كَانُوا صَادِقِينَ 
if in fact they're committed to the truth, if, if their claim has truth to it. Am خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ Is it the case that they were created out of nothing? Am هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ or is it the case that they themselves are the creators? This is the Qur'an's argument about the, about the purpose of life, the purpose of creation. Previous surah told us, or the, 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 the source, the origin of creation. Previous surah told us we weren't created with any reason but to be enslaved to Allah. Now, the question is, well, how do I know I was created by Allah? So there's only two options. Either you were created out of nothing. Nothing created you. Or, you yourself take the credit for creating yourself. Those are the only two other options. Am خُلِقُوا مِنْ غَيْرِ شَيْءٍ أَمْ هُمُ الْخَالِقُونَ The atheist can make all these arguments against the existence of God, but at the end of the day, he has to take this huge leap of faith and say, we were created as a result of an accident. Our intellect, our solar system, the atmosphere, the, the eco ecological life that's available on this planet, the plants, the, the, the carbohydrates and proteins and the nutrients on this earth, all of this was an accident, was one giant accident. And what's the accident? Well, the farthest we can go back, it was the Big Bang Theory. So, the, the, after all the philosophy is done, I take this, I put some explosives in here, and I let it blow up and it's going to turn into a dollhouse. That's, that's your argument. That you take a bunch of stuff, and you blow it up, and it turns into a universe. That is an order like that. And this, specifically this planet. Oh, no, there's, you know, we got lucky. All the billions of planets, we got lucky. Have you ever studied genetic code? I know we're not geneticists. That's out of, after a blockbuster went off? That this, this came into being? This is your argument, really? Then they'll start changing the subject and say, organized religion, blah, 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 blah. And you people believe in angels and da, 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 da. Okay, fine. Okay. And what you believe is far more absurd. It's far, far more absurd. Am khuliqu min ghayri shayin? Am humul khaliqun? Am khalaqu samawati wal ard? Or did they create the skies and the earth? But la yuqinun. No. But the fact of the matter is, they're not, they're not convinced. They don't want to be convinced. Or is it that they own the treasures of the land or, or of the ma of your master? Why did this revelation come to him? If it is, if there is a God, fine, fine. You know what? There is a God. But why him? Why do we need a messenger? Why didn't he talk to us? Oh, because you're in charge. You're the one that makes the decisions. You own the treasures. Treasures here being the revelations of Allah, and you're the ones in control. You get to make the call. This is the argument of the Qur'an when people say, well, if God really wanted to talk to me, He could talk to me. Why doesn't He talk to me? Because well, you get to make the demands. He's not just God, He's your master, you're a slave. You don't get to talk like this. You don't get to make the, set the conditions on what God should or shouldn't do. It's not your place. أَمْ لَهُمْ سُلَّمٌ يَسْتَمِعُونَ فِيهِ Do they have a ladder then? That they can go up to the sky and listen carefully to the other alternatives? The other reality? And then their listener, the one they sent up there to listen, can bring down a clear authority for their worldview. Oh no, let's talk about your, the, the rest of you. So there's the atheist among them that's been addressed. Then the rest of you. Oh, so he gets daughters. Is that the case? And you get sons? Or is it that you are asking them for compensation? The Prophet is asked now, are you asking them for money? Did you ask them for anything else? Some, any kind of payback for gi giving this message? فَهُمْ مِنْ مَغْرَمٍ مُثْقَلُونَ Then because of the penalty that you have asked for, the, the hefty price, you had a private meeting, they, held, they had a meeting with you, and they said, look Muhammad, you've got quite a few followers now, and it's becoming a lot of trouble. What do you really want? Money, right? Was there some backdoor meeting where you said, yeah, a couple of million will do it? And then they heard the price tag and they're so heavy on them? Is that the case? فَهُمْ مِنْ مَغْرَمٍ مُثْقَلُونَ مُثْقَلُونَ taken in by a burden. أَثْقَلَ to put a burden on someone. أُثْقِلَ to have a burden put on you. مُثْقَلْ the people who a huge burden is put on as a result of the maghram. Maghram means penalty. Price tag. So is that the case that you set such a hefty price on them? أَمْ عِنْدَهُمُ الْغَيْبِ Or is it the fact that they're the ones that have, they, they own the unseen. 
فهم يكتبون. Then they're the ones that are writing something down. They have some knowledge of what to be written, what's to be written down. أم يريدون كيدا؟ Or is it the case that they intend to make a plot? They, Allah didn't say أم يكيدون. He said يريدون كيدا. So they haven't made a plot yet. They're thinking maybe we should plan something about this. They're still in its early phases. فالذين كفروا هم المكيدون. Then those who disbelieve, they're the ones who a plot will be made against. They will be, it will come back to harm them. See how you have قَالَ يَقُولُ قَوْلًا فَهُوَ قَائِلًا قِيلَ يُقَالُ قَوْلًا فَهُوَ مَقُولٌ In صرف, مَقُول You have كَادَ يَكِيدُ كَائِد And كِيدَ يُكَادُ مَكِيد It becomes مَكِيد مَكِيدٌ أَمْ لَهُمْ إِلَاهٌ غَيْرُ اللَّهِ Do they have a God? Someone to worship? Someone to obey other than Allah? Subhanallah How per- declare the perfection of Allah above that عَمَّا يُشْرِكُونَ Way above and beyond whatever attributions, whatever associations they make. وَإِنْ يَرَوْ كِسَفًا مِنَ السَّمَاءِ سَاقِطًا And if they were to see a piece of the sky falling, يَقُولُ سَحَابٌ مركوم, Then they would have said a cloud, cloud, layer after layer after layer. You remember the nation that was destroyed? And over the valley, the people of Ad saw over the valley, they saw clouds coming, and they started thinking this is going to bring great rain, and they were dancing and happy, but it poured on them what they couldn't have expected. Right? So Allah says, this, this is what your case is going to be. When the, even when the punishment is coming, you guys are going to look like, oh, it's really cloudy today. <laughs> That's all you're going to see. Sahabu markum. Fadarhum. And leave them alone. Hatta yulaqu yawmahum alladhi fihi yus'aqoon. Until they get to come into contact with their own day. That is their day. الَّذِي فِيهِ يُسْعَقُونَ The day on which they are taken in by the loud explosion. Also means lightning. يُسْعَقُونَ Lightning. سَاعِقَ can also be translated lightning. تُصِيبَهُمُ السَّاعِقَ وَالْهَلَاكَ That the lightning and destruction will take a, take a hold of them. So the imagery is that of clouds, on top of clouds, on top of clouds, on top of clouds, and then lightning strikes them. You know, and they're just looking, waiting for rain, and lightning just comes and hits them. يَوْمَ لَا يُغْنِي عَنْهُمْ كَيْدُهُمْ شَيْئًا The day on which none of their planning is going to come to avail them at all. وَلَا هُمْ يُنصَرُونَ And they're not the people that are going to be helped. وَإِنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا عَذَابًا دُونَ ذَلِكَ And those no doubt that have done wrong have a punishment beyond that too. Meaning that's just the worldly punishment. Then comes Akhirah. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ However, most of them, they don't have any knowledge. وَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكَ you remain patient with the verdict of your master. The, the wisdom of your master, also the verdict, the judgment of your master. فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا Then you are under our watch. أَعْيُنِنَا Under our eyes means you're under our constant watch. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ حِينَ تَقُومُ It's very beautiful. Then declare the perfection of your master when you, when you rise. When you rise here means two things. The Prophet is sitting sallallahu alayhi wa and he's talking to the people and the people are making fun of him, or not listening, or walking away. So as you get up from that gathering, instead of being frustrated and walking away, saying words of anger, as you get up from that gathering, do tasbih of Allah. Just say subhanAllah. And you know from this, one of the sunan of the Prophet that we take in, when we have a gathering, and we have, you know, a halaqa, or conference, or something, and the speaker is done, he says, Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, and he leaves. Okay? So he says, Subhanallah, or they make istighfar, they say, Alhamd, something praising Allah at the end of a gathering. And even at the end of a hostile gathering. So you're under our watch. You stay, and why even mention patience in the beginning? Because patience is needed when you're dealing with these kinds of people. So you just keep delivering your message, you're under our watch, we're watching what you're doing. And when you get up from that kind of thing, then you declare the perfection of Allah. Also, hina taqum means when you stand up in the middle of the night and pray. That's the obvious meaning too. So when you, when you stand up in the middle of the night, then you should make a, a special tasbih to Allah Azza wa Jal, meaning the, the prayer itself. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَسَبِّحُهُ And especially in the night, you should declare His perfection. So there's two kinds of standing, standing before the people, and standing before Allah Azza wa Jal. وَإِدْبَارِ النُّجُومِ And especially when the, ta- the, when the, the, the stars disappear. إِدْبَارُ الدُّبُرُ When the stars show their back, they retreat, they go away. حِينَ تَغِيبُ النُّجُومِ حِينَ مَا تَغِيبُ النُّجُومِ When the time, when the stars go away. Meaning early, early morning. Fajr time. Then you should do tasbih. So before we read about how you should make tasbih after the salawat, after the sujood, and now we're seeing until the star, when the stars rise, 
when the stars start disappearing, meaning the Prophet ﷺ is already awake before the stars disappear. He can see the stars, and as they start to disappear, he starts making tasbih of Allah Azza wa Jal. And the surah ends, you know, again, people can have their convictions. The surah ends by mentioning stars disappearing, and what's the next surah? Surah Al Najm. It's, it's very beautiful transition in the Quran. And what's the, this surah, at tur was very similar to Surah Al-Dhariyat. If you look at the, the, some of the ayat are actually very parallel. And I, I didn't engage that with you, but if you sat down and started comparing, you'd find a lot of parallels between Dhariyat and Tur. Just like that, there are a lot of parallels between Najm and Qamar. And obviously stars and star, the star and the moon are complementary bodies that we see in the sky. So the next two surahs have a very complementary relationship with each other also. And then the next two surahs after that are very close to each other, Ar-Rahman and Al-Waqi'ah. They're very close to each other also. So it's twos and twos and twos. It's like that, that, that the surahs are now going to, to continue, inshallah. I'll give you, a, you guys a short break, and then we'll start our study of Surah Al-Najm. Barakallahu li wa lakum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.